This is part one of a lecture on the cell cycle and its regulation for um, Bio 236 from September 28th, 2020. And we're going to start um, by talking about some cells that do not actually go through the cell cycle um, or cells that are not undergoing the several stages that allow them to divide from one cell into two. Um, these non-dividing cells are in a state known as G0 or they are not mitotic. And you can see here that when we look at um, which cells of um, the organism are fully mitotic, it's not every single one of them. Some of them can undergo mitosis at certain times or are semi-mitotic, and other cells are post-mitotic, meaning that they do not undergo any cell divisions. Um, and so these cells over here would be considered um, as long as they are not dividing, to be in a G0 state. Um, cells in G0 are able to enter back into the cell cycle if they receive a mitogenic signal. Um, and they are mostly just performing their physiological functions, which don't require them to be constantly dividing. And so as I said, a cell in G0 that is not dividing can actually enter back into this um, four phase cycle um, at this point of G1 if it receives a mitogenic signal or a signal to divide. Right, and so the cell cycle is made up of two main parts interphase, which you can see here highlighted um, as the purplish blue stages, and M phase, which is the mitotic phase. And we're going to go through the cell cycle um, kind of stages in order in the next several slides. And so that first step um, of the cell cycle is known as G1 or the GAP1 phase. And in G1, the cell is technically metabolically active and it's duplicating or doubling its organelles and cytosolic components in preparation for turning one cell into two, right? Because you need to make twice as many molecules, twice as many organelles in order to have the material to ultimately create two cells via the cell cycle. And then after the gap one phase, there is um, a checkpoint before uh, the cell cycle can move into the next phase or the S phase. And this is known as the G1 to S checkpoint. And so what the G1 to S checkpoint really does is checks um, the um, extracellular environment to make sure conditions are um, adequate to divide. And it also checks for damages in the DNA because in S phase, the DNA is going to be replicated or doubled. And so we the cell cycle does not want to allow a damaged or broken piece of DNA to be replicated. And so there's this checkpoint um, between G1 and the synthesis or S phase. And double-stranded breaks in the DNA are sensed by certain proteins. And um, upon damage to DNA, there's a protein known as P53, which is a tumor suppressor protein that goes from inactive form to an active form upon being exposed to DNA damage. Um, that activated P53 has been phosphorylated in order to activate it, and then phosphorylated or active P53 can bind to the DNA um, as a transcription factor and upregulate expression of a protein called P21. P21 is a cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor we're going to talk more about cyclin-dependent kinases later, but their main function is to promote progression through the cell cycle. And there are different cyclin-dependent kinases um, that are activated at different parts of the cell cycle. This one in particular is an S-CDK or an S-cyclin-dependent kinase because it promotes S, um, S or synthesis phase. And P21's job is to basically bind to S-CDK and inhibit it from promoting the movement of the cell in the cell cycle from G1 to S. And so uh, DNA damage will lead to activated P53 and upregulation of the cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor P21, which can bind to an active CDK complex 
and ultimately halt the cell cycle of G1. And this regulation is very important. Um, and it's important because, as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> the next phase of the cell cycle is S, which is the synthesis phase where DNA is replicated. Um, and the cell does not want to um, replicate damaged or broken DNA because um, then that damage will be perpetuated on to future generations of cells, right? And so this regulation, this halting of the cell cycle in G1 until the damage can either be repaired or the cell can um, be signaled into apoptosis or cell death is very important. So that the um, DNA damage is not perpetuated through cell division. Okay, and so the G1 phase leads into S phase or synthesis phase of interphase, which is where DNA replication takes place. And so in gap one or G1 phase, we've doubled the organelles and the biomolecules. In S phase, we have doubled the genetic information to make two new cells. And then um, <coughs> S phase progresses into gap two phase, um, where replication of centrosomes or the microtubule organizing centers is completed. Um, other proteins and enzymes that are going to be necessary for mitosis are doubled and completed um, and synthesized um, in preparation for the kind of big important phase, which is the M phase or mitosis. And so the cell cycle, um, once again, progresses from G1 to S to G2 to M. Um, and in the process, one cell that starts in G1 is ultimately divided into two at the end of mitosis. We're going to talk more about the different phases um, of mitosis in the next part of the lecture.